You've got that nasty squeal when you apply the brake pedal, or maybe you've got that strange vibration up in the front end when you apply the brakes, or maybe the vehicle's pulling left or right when you apply brakes. In any of those scenarios, you've got to change discs or rotors or both. This job is much easier than you think, I promise. We're going to prove that to you today. We're going to help you wrench up and tackle a disc brake job. Let's face it, you're probably spending more money than ever on gasoline, and every do-it-yourself project that you can tackle puts money right back in your pocket. Before we begin, I wanted to quickly show you the essential components of a disc brake process. If you understand how the brakes work on your mountain bike, you can understand this. This is the spinning rotor. It's attached to the hub and rolls down the road, holding your wheel on. These are the brake pads. We're going to replace these today. They create friction against there. When the caliper, which goes on top, takes hydraulic action, converts it to mechanical action, creating friction, stopping the wheel. We've got the vehicle stable and secure in a nice level spot. Now, just about any caliper configuration you're going to run into, there's two bolts that hold the caliper onto a caliper mounting bracket. Just pull the slide pins out, pull the caliper off. You can get a good look at the caliper as it compares to the new one. Looks exactly the same. Now, I like to hang this caliper up under the fender well. I like to use a bungee cord because we don't want any tension on this brake line. No reason to take a chance on kinking it or breaking it. Remove the old pads, get rid of them. Next step is to remove the caliper mounting bracket so we can gain access to the rotor. That'll allow us to put the new rotor right on. Now the top caliper mounting bracket bolt and we're clear into the rotor. We've got the caliper off, the pads off, the bracket off. Get it loose, caliper mounting bracket comes right off in your hands. Now on many of today's rotors, there'll be a screw or usually two that'll hold the rotor assembly right to the hub. I've got these loosened up. I'm just gonna continue backing them out. And now just after six bolts, ready to put on the new performance rotor. Well, the main thing we want on our Miata is performance. We want some great stopping power, and we're going to get that. But there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of a sporty look. With Dupacolor's awesome caliper paint that can handle the high temps, this is going to look really good once we have red calipers at all four wheels. The next step, install the new caliper. Remove the bolt that connects the hydraulic line to the caliper. And then get yourself a cup, any kind of a cup or a catch pan or tray. You don't want this warm brake fluid all over your work surface. Now, we're ultimately going to replace all of our brake fluid, but I still like to catch as much as I possibly can. Next, reconnect the brake line to the new caliper. It only goes one way. We also have the new copper washer that came with the brake hardware kit installed. A second washer on the original bolt. Line everything up. Gently thread the bolt down in. Be careful you do not cross-thread this. In some vehicle applications, the calipers are specific to each side. They're usually marked. We've got it marked for right side on our Miata. Spin the bolt down in. Check and see if you have torque specs to hit. We're just about ready to install the new caliper. Before we install the new performance rotors we got from Brembo, we want to hit them with a little bit of brake clean. This is going to remove any of the packaging oils that would still be on the rotor that could potentially contaminate the pads. Wipe down the back and slide it right on. Next, we reinstall the caliper mounting bracket. Here's a tip for you. Take one of your lug nuts and reinstall it on any one of the studs. It holds the rotor true and straight, making it much easier to reinstall the new pads. It's one less thing to wrestle with. Now, we've got our new pads. The shims are included on them. They're great pads. You want to make sure you install the spring clips. These are new ones that came with our brake hardware kit, but if you're not replacing them, be sure to reinstall them. They only go in one way. And these guys keep the pads from rattling around in there and squealing on you. The pad only goes in one way. Seat the tab down into the bottom. With a liberal amount of silicone on your new slide pins slash bolts, reinstall the top of the caliper. I like to get the weight suspended so there's no chance in damaging that brake line now. And then we'll reinstall the lower one. We finished up the driver's side front, and now we've moved to the back of the vehicle, where it's still not too bad of a job, but things are a little bit different due to the emergency brake cable connections. Just like on the front, there's two caliper mounting bracket bolts. Got both of them out now. The rear caliper slides right off. And same thing, I don't want to have too much tension on the brake line, so I'm going to use a bungee cord to hold it. But I just wanted to show you to take good note of the emergency brake cable, how it connects, very simple connection, two bolts to loosen up and we can transfer that over to the new caliper. Not hard to do. You just need to back off this nut, take the tension off, take the cam out of the horseshoe clip, that's removed. We'll still take off the brake line and transfer everything over. Next we take off the brake line mounting bolt, 
just about ready to swap out calipers. Well, there's a couple of things I'm really excited about on the back half of this Miata brake job. First, these powder coated red calipers we got. They're going to hold up in the toughest of conditions. And I specifically didn't get calipers that were preloaded. I wanted to choose my own brake pads. This car's going to see some performance. I chose the Wagner pads, the thermo quiets that they've got out now. These are outstanding pads, tremendous friction, and I love this. They don't require shims or any type of lubrication when you install them. Very easy to work with. All we have to do now, transfer the emergency brake cable bracket from the old caliper over to the new one. We have the rear rotor off the passenger side of the Miata. I'm checking it for thickness all the way around using a micrometer. You want to check it at least three places. First two are good. And we are definitely within spec all the way around. No need to replace this rotor at this time. We are going to use a brake hub cleaning kit though and get it cleaned up and looking good. I've got the inboard Wagner Thermoquiet pad already in place. Install the outboard one. And now, space them apart, in one smooth motion, slide it right down onto the rotor, and your caliper mounting bracket will fall right into place, reinstall your bolts, and you're just about home. And finally, reinstall the brake line. Be sure you use the new copper washers to come with your kit. Hold it there, hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. Good, no drips. After I get done bleeding the brakes, I like to take a fresh white cloth and put it under every corner and check for drips. We look like we're in good shape. Now, you gotta bleed the brakes when you do a project like this. If you're not sure how, check out our bleeding brakes video clinic on advancedautoparts.com. It's not hard to do. Just start at the furthest wheel away from the master cylinder reservoir. This thing's looking good. I'm excited about those high-tech, high-performance Brembo rotors up front. We're about to do a road test and get these wheels turning. And now the best part of any brake job, the road test. Man, these things feel great. 